Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video today we're going to be talking about the cranial nerves. So if you do like this video and you really find it helpful, please go over and check out ninjanerd.org. All of our notes and illustrations for the lectures we have here on YouTube are available for you guys to use. And also you can also check out our merch that's there. Leave a comment and subscribe here to Ninja Nerd Nursing and let's get started with cranial nerves. So this video is just going to be a quick breakdown of the name of all the cranial nerves, the type that they are, because we have a couple different types of cranial nerves, the function, and then also the assessment that you'll do as a nurse to maybe check up on your patient to see what's going on with them. So as we look at the board right now, we can see here this diagram that we put up here, which is an inferior view of the brain, right? With our posterior here, our anterior up top, and then we have our right side and the left side. We have 12 cranial nerves, right? They're pairs. So these 12 pairs of cranial nerves originate within the cranium and they sprout out and to do different functions, different things that we need our bodies to do, right? So as we go through here, we're gonna start off with number one. Every single cranial nerve has a number. It's a Roman numeral. So I wrote them nice and big here. If you're new to Roman numerals, this is a good time to start getting used to them. So the first one we have here is our olfactory. Our olfactory nerve is number one. And it is this dark purple here that's coming off right in the middle. So we can put cranial nerve one here and here. And cranial nerve one has a type, right? So there's a couple different types that we can have. We can have a sensory nerve that's going to be able to get some sensations, doing you know any type of our different types of sensations like hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling. We can also have function, right? So function, or sorry, motor is what I meant to say. With motor, it's gonna create some type of movement within our body. So we can have a sensory nerve, we can have a motor nerve. We can also have a little bit of an autonomic nerve that's gonna do some type of correlation with blood pressure, heart rate, things like that. And then we can have a nerve that does both a motor and a sensory. It's able to have some type of sensation and also has to do some type of motor movement. And there's a lot of anatomy and physiology we can go into with the different type of efferent and afferent signaling and all that's going on. But for this video, it's just the basis of is it sensory, is it motor, or is it both? What is that function? And then how can we assess that function, right? So again, let's back it up. We're doing olfactory. This is Roman numeral one. This is cranial nerve number one. What type of nerve is our olfactory? The type is a sensory. Olfactory nerve is a sensory nerve, so its function is actually smell, right? To be able to smell. And we can see that here. So as a nurse, if we want to assess our patient's smell or our old factory, we would be able to do a couple different tests. The one that we like to do in nursing is to hold something up underneath their nose, see if they can smell it while their eyes are closed and identify what that smell is. The next one we're gonna move on to is our optic nerve. Optic nerve is nerve number two. It is right here. You can see that it actually originates from the optic chiasma and then it comes off on either side here. So we have two. Our optic nerve is a sensory nerve, and its function is vision, right? Our optic nerve, we know that it's located within our eye, so the function of this is vision. More so, it has to do with the ability to recognize, okay? So if we're going to assess our patient, one of the things that we can use is the Snell and eye chart, right? So we stand the patient 20 feet away, we're gonna have them cover one eye, if they have glasses on, they're gonna keep their glasses on. And we're gonna see what the lowest uh, line is that they can read on the Snell and eye chart to see where their vision is. So the one way that we can assess the optic nerve is the Snell and eye chart. Moving on to ocular motor, which is cranial nerve three, located up here in the blue. And the ocular motor nerve has its little cheat right in there. The type of nerve that this is is a motor nerve. And the function of the ocular motor nerve is to help with eye movement. Particularly, it's going to do some movement within the pupil. It also is able to do some movement around the eye, okay? So there's three different nerves that we're gonna be eventually talking about with eye movement. We have ocular motor, trochlear, and then on the other side, we have abducens. They have to do with different types of movement. The ocular motor does most of the movement. Trochlear is gonna do superior oblique. Abducens is gonna do our lateral. But what we're looking at here is the first eye movement where we're talking about doing those different eye movements, right? Going to be able to look and see if our eye is moving correctly. The ocular motor is also important because it has to do with our optic nerve. So when we use a pen light to assess our patients, we're almost assessing two nerves. The sensation of the light coming in, right? So our eye is able to sense that that light has come in, sends the signal to say, hey, 
there's light, lots of light coming in, we should probably constrict. That constriction message comes for our, down our ocular motor nerve to constrict the pupil. So one of the ways we can assess is doing the pen light to see is the pupil constricting. And there's different ways to also assess what's going on with the nerve. Is the eye that we're flashing the light in constricting along with the eye on the opposite side constricting as well at the same rate? Are they constricting the same way? So this is a very in-depth, we can go very in-depth with this assessment, but just for this purpose of this video, we're gonna just talk about the pen light is the pupil constricting. And then we can move on to tro trochlear, cranial nerve four. All right, and we have this type of nerve, which is also a motor. It also has to do, like we said before, with eye movement. And for this, the assessment is that we're gonna be doing the follow my finger to see if our superior oblique is working properly. So this is where we can do the six cardinal um, spots that we wanna go through to follow the finger, right? We can also do the H, but what we're looking for is the eye, are the eyes moving together? Are they able to follow my finger? Is there any other issues with the eye movement? Now let's go to the other side. Next up we have here is our cranial nerve five. We have trigeminal, which is this big purple thing right here. It's actually the biggest cranial nerve. And our trigeminal is actually the first of the cranial nerves that is able to do both sensory and motor. So when we get to this part, this is when I like to think, okay, this is a nerve that's gonna do both. So what is the function of the trigeminal nerve? So it's able to sense, okay, particularly it's able to sense on the face different types of pressure, different types of pain, different types of sensations, right, all on the face. But the trigeminal nerve is also able to do function of motor, right? So with the motor, it's actually gonna have to do with different muscles on the side of the face, particularly our temporalis intermasseter. So now that this is a nerve that has both, we have to start thinking of how do we assess this? So there's two different assessments we essentially need to do to check on our trigeminal nerve. The first assessment, if we're thinking about sensation and we're thinking about pain, temp, touch, we're gonna be able to take something like a cotton swab and then something sharp, right? You can take, like, some people break a stick off. I just like to use like the end of a um, tongue depressor, just like press in. Um, and we can go through and test on different parts. We can take the cotton swab and do one side and then the other, do the cheek, and then we can also do down on the chin, right? I'm gonna ask the patient, do you feel this? Is it soft? Is it, is it tough? Is it scratchy? Whatever sharp, whatever word you wanna use. So that's how we can assess the sensations. So I'm gonna rate that really quickly. And then the way we can assess motor is we can have the patient clench their jaw. And when they clench their jaw, you can then palpate on either side if you can feel the masseter or the temporalis. They should both be you know, feeling like they're, they're, they're engaged, they're working, right? So we're gonna have them clench and then palpate. And then we can move on to the abducens. This is cranial nerve six. And when we look at the abducens, abducens is one of those that has a star, right? And this is a type, since we talk about eye movement, has to do with these three different nerves, right? Abducens is going to then be a motor. And with abducens, we talked about these different eye movement nerves. Again, the abducens has to do with eye movement. Particularly, the abducens has to do with lateral eye movement. So when we assess this patient, right, we're, we're thinking about how we can assess this. This is to do with the patient being able to look laterally, okay, and, and medially, right? It has to do with the lateral oblique, right? Particularly, or lateral rectus. Particularly when we are doing this, we're gonna be doing that following the finger, right? Or we're gonna be doing anything else that has to do with the movement. And when we're doing those cardinal directions and we're looking at these different movements, we're looking for, are the eyes moving the same? Are they moving with a nice smooth movement, right? Because if we have any type of jitteriness afterwards, that could be nystagmus movement throughout. That could be a nystagmus. So when we're assessing with the movement, we want to make sure is the patient having a nice smooth movement? Is it matching on both sides? There's nothing that's having like a little droop or it's moving a little slower. Everything's looking symmetrical. Then we can move on to cranial nerve seven, which is our facial nerve. So our facial nerve here is our dark blue one. We can see that right here. And when we're talking about our cranial nerve, we are actually gonna have a facial sensation type of nerve and it's gonna be doing both. So when we think of a nerve that has both, we have to start thinking about what is the sensation and then what is the motor. For sensation here in the facial nerve, it actually has to do with taste. 
And if we think about it, we already knew that trigeminal had to do with like the outside of the face, right? And we already had the olfactory that had to do with our nose, with optic that had to do with our eye. So the other sensation we have up here on the face, right, is going to be taste. Also with facial, we said it has both, it has a function of both motor and sensory. So if we have taste, the other thing that our face likes to do is give a lot of expression. So the function is also going to be facial expressions. So how are we going to assess them? Well, particularly for taste within the facial, it has to actually do with the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And how we can assess that is we're able to take certain different types of things, whatever you have in the hospital, and have them taste it, right? It's a little more in depth, so it's something that we don't need to um, utilize, particularly every day as a nurse, but we'll be able to have them identify a taste. And then for our assessment of our facial expressions, this is when we do all those different types of movements with the face. So we can tell them to puff out their cheeks, smile, raise your eyebrows, squint, close your eyes. All of those are going to be able to see, is the face looking symmetrical? Is it moving? Is there any droop that I'm noticing? Is there any issue with the, the movement of the face in general? So this is going to be when we have them do all those different facial expressions. And then we can move on to the next cranial nerve, which is cranial nerve eight, our vestibular cochlear. Vestibular cochlear is also a both type of nerve. So if we look up here, we have eight right here, this red nerve right here. And our vestibular cochlear has a function of both. So we think both, what are we looking at? This has to do with hearing and balance. So hearing is going to be our sensation, right? And balance is going to be our motor. So to assess this, what we're looking at here is a couple different tests. When we are assessing hearing, we could do the whisper test where we have them include one ear and then we whisper it to the other side or do some type of movement to that side to see if they can hear it. And then vice versa, include the other ear, listen. Okay, we can whisper a word, you know, you could say like, IV, you know, or I like the office, things like that. We can also do balance, right? In balance, we can do anything where they're moving their head around. Do they feel uncomfortable? There's many more in depth where we can lay them back and see if they're having nystagmus. But there's one that we always touch on, if, especially if we're going into nursing um, NP school, is using our tuning fork. And that's when we can do the, the Wren test or the Weber test, where we can either hit the tuning fork and put it on the top of their head, and then we can also have the tuning fork hit Back of the, the back of the bone here and then also bring it up to the ear. Can they hear all that? Those are more advanced, but for the purpose of this video, just understand that the vestibular cochlear is a nerve that does both and it is going to be hearing and balance. And then we can test that by doing the whisper, doing different tests with the tuning fork, and then seeing if they also are having balance. The other one you can do is also seeing if they have equilibrium by moving their arms and seeing if they're able to do everything at the same time. Now we're going to move on to the last nerve on this side, which we're moving on to cranial nerve 9, which is our glossopharyngeal. Now when we're looking at glossopharyngeal, glossopharyngeal has a type that is both, okay? So it's going to be able to, again, do sensory and motor. And when we're looking at this, we said both, so there's going to be two different types. We're looking for a sense and we're looking for a motor. So for the sensation, it's actually going to be taste again. We said earlier with the facial that it was the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. It's because the glossopharyngeal does the posterior one-third of the tongue. So again, that would have to do with, can we take that little uh, bit of tasting thing, whatever we're doing, we're gonna be tasting, we're gonna put it in the back of their tongue on the posterior end of it to see if they can identify that taste. The other function of the glossopharyngeal, a lot of different things in here that we can identify. It's the moving of the pharynx, pharynx, you can see that here. So it has to do with swallowing. We're going to put that in here that it has to do with swallowing and the ability to move things around. But there's also another nerve that works with that in a second that we're going to talk about, which is the vagus nerve. So when I keep in mind, we're just going to put a little note in here about what the assessment is, but when we think about swallowing and we think about all the different things that are going on within the throat area, we want to make sure that we understand that not only does the pharyngeal have to do with that, but also the vagus. So we can do a lot of different things. You know, you, you stick the, the tongue compressor in and say, ah, you can do, see if the uvula is moving. All of that has to do with this and the vagus. So I'm going to put a little note here, talk a little more in depth in it in a minute. 
So I put on here tongue depressor, say ah, uh, and then also swallow water. Now let's move on to vagus. All right, engineers. nerds, now let's talk about cranial nerve number 10, our vagus nerve. So it's located right here, this pink. And the vagus nerve is a nerve that also does both. And like we said before, the vagus nerve has to do with different sensations, and then it also has to do with motor, right? So when we're looking at this, you want to think about things like swallowing, and we also want to think of gag reflex, right? So it's the ability to have that sensation back there of can we feel what's going on back there, but also are we having a safe way to swallow, and then do we have an intact gag reflex? So we can put on here gag and also swallowing. And we can also put on here, talk about speech as well. So first let's talk about the assessment for speech. Speech is fairly simple. If we're talking to the patient, it sounds nice and clear. It doesn't sound garbled or any other issue going on with them having any hoarseness. So is there any inability with the voice sounding? Not necessarily the words or the identification of anything, but just the way everything is sounding. And then we can move into swallowing. Like we talked about before, the glossopharyngeal, what we're looking at here is, is the patient having an ability to swallow? So we can take that tongue depressor, go in, we're looking, we're seeing everything looks symmetrical, the uvula looks nice center midline. We put the tongue depressor in and we press down, and as we ask them to swallow, we can see that everything is closing, and then we can then initiate the gag reflex and see if they have a gag reflex. Now remember, some people do not have a gag reflex or they have a very high tolerance, so you might have to really get in there to make them gag. It's not uncommon, it's just uncommon if, or noting a change, in it. So if the patient did have a big gag reflex and now some they don't have a gag reflex, then that would be a cause for concern. But if there isn't one or it's a really hard time to get them going, uh, that's okay. Just make sure it's noted within the chart. And now we're moving on to our accessory nerve right here. So we have cranial nerve number 11. Cranial nerve number 11 is a motor. And the function of the accessory nerve has to do with the movement of the neck. So when we assess, this is when we can ask the patient to you know, look up, look down. Can you look to the left and to the right? Can you also touch your ear to your shoulder on both sides? And then we can also ask them to shrug their shoulders, right? And then we can apply pressure um, and resistance on any of those directions. But this accessory muscle has to do with all of those different types of movement. And then the last is going to be our hypoglossal. This is cranial nerve 12, our last one, engineer nerds. It is located right here. Uh, let's write it right here. So cranial nerve 12, this type is also a motor, and it has to do with the ability and the movement of our tongue. Particularly when we assess this patient, this is when we're gonna ask them to stick their tongue out. This will look nice and symmetrical. We're gonna ask them to move their tongue side to side, right? And is there any issues with that movement? And that is it, Ninja Nerds. That is the quick run through of all the cranial nerves of their type, function, and an assessment that you can do hopefully quickly at the best guide. So I really hope you got this. I really hope you understand a little bit more about the cranial nerves. And I hope this eases a little bit of the questions that you got going into this anatomy and physiology of neuro. But as always, until next time.